What's up guys, my name is Justin Graziano and I'm going to show you how to capture floating product photography like this, but in a photo. Hey guys, thanks so much for joining me for another video. This will mark video number three for me. So recently one of my friends asked me if I was interested in shooting some photos for her brother's coffee company, You're and of down. course I was down. Their coffee company is called Retrograde Coffee Roasters, and they're located at a Sebastopol, or Sebastopol, or Sebastopol? Let me see, Sebastopol? Sebastopol. If you guys like coffee, make sure you go and follow them and check them out if you're ever in the area. Retrograde's branding is very fun with this little cartoon astronaut holding a coffee mug with coffee floating out of it. So instantly, I wanted to shoot some floating product photography as soon as I saw this. So one thing that helps me out a ton when shooting shots like this that are a little more technical is to actually take my ideas and sketch them onto paper. Even though I have my shot in my head, seeing it on paper helps me visualize my setup better and will help me work more efficiently. For my first idea, I want to make it feel like the bag is floating through space with the coffee splashing around it and then add in some of the beans for a little extra depth, just like we did in my first video when I shot the pecans. If you guys haven't watched that video, I'll make sure to link that up here. For my second idea, I actually want to replicate the mug that the astronaut's holding with the coffee flying out of it, by adding a slight tilt to the cup to make it feel like it's floating through the frame. Let's go ahead and start with my second idea since I know we can shoot that quicker than my first idea. And once again, I'll be shooting on my Sony a7 III with a 50mm 1.8 and my two Flashpoint 8200s, and I'll be putting them into two large soft boxes to help soften the light and add some nice clean highlights. We're going to light this one with one backlight that will help the coffee really pop off my black background and then we're going to add a key light with a white foam bar on the opposite side to help add in some fill light. Before we start splashing the coffee, we're going to take a clean shot of the mug just in case we might need to clean anything up in post. Once our lights are set up and you've taken your clean shot, we can go ahead and start capturing some splashes. From here, we're going to make the mug actually float, and we're going to be doing this in a pretty simple way. We're just going to carefully grip the mug, making sure we don't wrap our fingers around the handle too much. That way, we can easily cut our hand out in post. You could do this using fishing line if you really want to, but the mug is pretty heavy, and it would take me more time to rig up the mug than it would actually take me to remove my hand in post. So let's jump back to my first idea with the bag floating and the liquid splashing around the bag. I thought the easiest way to shoot this one would be by simply clamping the bag onto a light stand that we can remove in post, then shooting the bag at a slightly lower angle that will allow us to see the bottom of the bag to help with that floating aspect that we're looking for. So just like our mug shot, we're going to shoot one clean shot of the bag to have to work with before we start splashing liquid onto our product. And as an extra precaution for the sake of my gear for the shot, I decided to take some plastic wrap and wrap my light stand and even my camera in hopes of protecting them from any liquid as best as I could since I was going to be throwing the coffee straight at the bag and across the room. I think my cam is pretty weatherproof, but I just didn't want to risk anything. So after I got everything wrapped, I was ready to take my first and hopefully my only shot to make the splash happen. I really had no idea how to approach this except for to just grab a pitcher of coffee and throw it at the bag and just hope for the best. So I just had to go for it and... The clamp I used was super tiny and not strong at all, so the bag just went flying with the liquid and totally wasn't what I was looking for. I thought the tiny clamp was going to be easier to remove in post, but I never even thought that it wouldn't be strong enough to pull the bag with something hitting it. So I went ahead and grabbed a more heavy duty clamp this time that I knew would work. I just thought I would figure out how to remove it later in post. Now that we got my bag properly clamped, we can go ahead and give this one more try. Thankfully the bag actually stayed in place this time and I think we captured exactly what I was looking for. Then I took these guys in the Lightroom and Photoshop real quick to remove my hand out of the shot with the mug by using the pen tool and then I put them onto a black isolated background. Then I went ahead and took some of my favorite splash shots to composite them inside the mug. 
I ended up using about three different splashes for this one to make it feel like the coffee was floating up and out of the mug rather than just splashing out of it. And if you actually look at the illustration of the astronaut, his coffee is actually doing a similar motion, so I'm feeling pretty satisfied with this one. So we can move on to the next one, which is actually a little bit more difficult. We're gonna remove both the clamp and the light stand out of the image in order for it to make it feel like the bag is floating. This one actually took me some time to figure out. I started by cutting out my clean bag and then laying it over my splash image. It took me a few tries, but after pulling different sections and doing some brushing and stamping, I was really able to blend the image together really nicely. Then to remove the stand out of the photo, all I did was paint black over where the stand was, and then I pulled some drips from some of the other photos. I felt like this really helped add some extra elements to make it feel like the bag was actually floating. Then the last thing I did was drop in a bunch of beans that I shot from another photo from this project. I actually took more than just these two photos I'm walking you guys through, but they're taken very similar to my first video. So for the sake of time, I thought I would walk you guys through the two floating shots instead since they were using some different techniques. Overall, I'm pretty stoked with the way these turned out. The mug shot was already pretty similar to something I've already done before, so I'm glad I was able to share that technique with you guys. As for the bag shot, it was something completely new for me to try and I'm pretty happy with the results even though it made a complete mess in my garage, but it was all worth it in the end to get the shot that I envisioned. I hope that this video inspired you to try some floating product photography yourself. Take the techniques I use and apply them to your own. You don't need to recreate what I did exactly, but use it as inspiration to create something for yourself. If you shoot any photos using these techniques, I would love to see them. So please make sure you tag me on Instagram. I'll have that link below if you want to give me a follow or just say hey. If you guys enjoyed this video or found it helpful, I would greatly appreciate it if you'd hit that like button, leave me a comment, and subscribe. Your support means the world to me. There are many more videos to come. I'm thinking in the next one, I'm gonna cover some product video work for you guys. But until then, I'll see you guys in the next one.